Hello my creative critters and welcome to Sketching with Sarah. I'm Sarah and for this week's video I'm going to be sharing my first week of Inktober. If you don't know what Inktober is, Inktober is a 31 day prompt list designed to get you to draw something with ink every day and post it mostly on Instagram and Twitter for the month of October. Over the years I feel like it's become less and less about a rigid and intimidating challenge and more of a fun way to get creative while practicing your ink skills and to connect with other artists who are taking on the same challenge. I've successfully completed completed Inktober for the last two years and I feel like I've got some good advice for anyone who is afraid to start or feeling burnt out and seeking motivation and tips to keep it going. So for the month of October this year every Friday since that's when I upload on YouTube I will be sharing different tips and advice that I use to get through Inktober as well as other ideas that relate to the way I choose to tackle Inktober that week. In this week's video I'll be focusing on the main problem that discourages me from <laughs> completing Inktober some Sometimes, and that is the medium of ink itself and the problem of seeing the prompt list and just not being inspired at all by the prompts that you're working with. The first problem that I want to touch on is the issue of ink is permanent and if you mess up you can't really erase it and try again. Now there's a lot of tutorials on YouTube on how to rework and fix mistakes and just how to use ink in general in your artwork with different techniques and stuff and let me know if that's something you'd like me to explore in a video but I have a lot of experience with ink from art school and just in my free time in my sketchbook so it doesn't bother me that much anymore but I totally understand being intimidated by it at first because I was too. I'll go into detail about what helps me using ink in a moment but first I want to explain what you're watching right now and that is Inktober's 2021 day one prompt. Day one's prompt is crystal and I couldn't just draw a crystal and call it a day. I have to add an animal in it somehow because I love drawing animals. I thought about how sea otters and river otters and sea lions are so agile and bendy in the water and I thought it would be a cool composition to have a sea otter swooping around an underwater crystal formation of some sort so that's exactly what I drew. For Inktober this year I decided to use ballpoint pen because I've recently been enjoying sketching with it in my sketchbook. I mean in my opinion ballpoint pen is the least messy sketching material to work with and there's no smudging or transferring on the sketchbook on the other side of the pages. I mean, I feel like if I use a ballpoint pen to sketch all of my Inktobers, I'll only get better using a ballpoint pen to sketch. So if the ink medium is what's stopping you from participating in Inktober, I have a few ways that you can go about it. One is if you are completely uninterested in even trying ink, but you still want to participate in a prompt list of some kind in October. One thing you can do is pick a different prompt list altogether that isn't focused on ink. There are so many prompt lists out there made by artists all over Instagram and for example, Drawtober is one where any art medium is welcome. And I'm also participating in that one too because it's nice that the prompts are broken up into every five days so you have a little bit more time to work on your pieces as well, which is kind of nice. But if it is important that you stick with the Inktober prompt list, don't forget that there's literally nothing stopping you from using those prompts in any medium. In my opinion, at the end of the day, as long as you're getting inspired and creating something, I don't think it matters what medium you choose to express it. That being said, if you want to dip your toes into ink, first of all, I wouldn't recommend it literally, but if you just want to try out ink but aren't super committed in doing art only in ink, but you love working in watercolor or colored pencil or any other medium, try adding line art in ink here and there with your preferred medium and just experiment with it. You don't even have to use black ink. There's a million colors of ink. I mean, I'm using a colored ballpoint pen because why not? If you're still hesitant to use ink because it's permanent and you can't erase it, I'd recommend sketching and even fully drawing out your whole illustration in pencil first and then go over the lines and in ink afterwards. So many if not all ink artists start with some kind of preliminary sketch before using ink on their work and it's a totally normal practice. In fact it's definitely recommended to get the best results and don't forget that it's not cheating to be prepared. Personally I do recommend people get comfortable with ink for the exact reason that you can't erase it and it forces you to be more intentional with your mark making and more confident with every line that you draw. I used to 
to use my eraser way more than my pencil it felt like and after getting more comfortable with ink my pencil drawing skills also improved because I kept that same mindset of being intentional with the marks. Drawing with Waffles here on YouTube has a great video talking about how sketching in pen helped her art and I'll have that link below so you can check it out in my description. I found it really interesting and I realized that drawing in ballpoint pen helped my pencil skills too. That's another reason I wanted to use Inktober to just draw in ballpoint pen because I want to get even more comfortable and I also love the sketchy look of it. I mean, welcome to sketching with Sarah. By the way, if you're enjoying this video so far or found any of this helpful, don't forget to leave a like on this video. It really helps me out so that YouTube suggests my videos for more people to see. Now, by far the most common and the most difficult obstacle that I experienced while participating in Inktober is that there's at least one of those prompts that you just really can't think of something to draw for or that one prompt that just really doesn't inspire you at all. So as I finish up this sea otter crystal drawing, let's talk about what you can do when you get that one prompt that you just really can't think of something that you feel like drawing for it. The first tip that I have is to think about what you actually do like to draw or what inspires you to create and somehow make the prompt fit that. Taking this first prompt for example, the prompt itself was crystal and just drawing a crystal sounded kind of boring to me, I'm not gonna lie. Now if you love studying realism and capturing all the light bouncing in the crystal inspires you, then this prompt was probably easy for you. Don't get me wrong, it was fun to study the crystals too, but to add that extra element that would make me excited to draw this prompt and continue through it is to add an animal somehow. I love otters and all water mammals to be honest, so adding a sea otter discovering the crystals was very inspiring for me to keep the momentum because for me personally, I've done my share of still lifes in art school and on my own time, that I need to add a little something more than the object to keep me motivated. I actually only planned on having a little portion of the crystal and have the sea otter a lot smaller, but then I got pretty ambitious with it and made the sea otter's head really big. So I had to make the crystals larger and taller so that the sea otter had something to swim around. This could all be avoided obviously if I used a pencil to sketch out my idea first, but since we're in pen, you put that ink down, you can't go back. For day two, Two's Inktober, the prompt was suit. And the first animal that I thought about with this word is the penguin because they kind of have a tuxedo look to them with the black and white. And I thought it would be so cute to have a tubby little baby penguin really excited about his new bow tie. So that's exactly what I drew for day two. So if the subject matter is what's making you not want to draw the prompt that day, make it into something that does. I didn't want to draw a suit, but a fluffy baby penguin, I had to. There's no rules on how much the prompt has to relate to what you draw and if anything the more stretched the prompt is the more creative it ends up being and when you post to Instagram or Twitter people do notice that and when they scroll through the hashtag Inktober 2021 suit through the sea of drawings of a dude in a suit the cute bow tied penguin will stand out a lot more at the end of the day Inktober is just about drawing and getting creative in my opinion and hey maybe that weird drawing that you created trying to force a prompt were into something that you like ends up being a drawing that you really love and inspires you to draw another illustration down the line fleshing out the idea even more. I've come up with some of my favorite ideas by using prompts and sometimes Inktober drawings come back as other drawings. I mean the animal hybrids that I came up with my first completed Inktober in I think 2019. A lot of those hybrids ended up becoming full-fledged illustrations for my portfolio in college and I would have never come up with those ideas if I didn't do Inktober. Day three's prompt is vessel and a vessel is just a container of some kind and I'm not gonna draw a glad Tupperware container and I was definitely not gonna draw a boat or a ship which is another definition of vessel. So a bonus tip is look up the definition of the words in the prompts and let those words inspire you too. I do that all the time. A lot of words you think you know what it means and then you look up the definition and it can mean a lot of other things too or even the way that the definition is worded makes you think of something else. You don't know until you try. So I was feeling cozy at the time and I thought maybe I'll draw a cup of hot tea or coffee and have this little fox curled up around it and I thought it would just be so cute and wholesome. I just had to start drawing. I love studying and drawing animals so I used this as a way to study a reference of a fox and with that added layer of not being able to erase it, it was extra challenging to capture the proportions and overall feel of the drawing but I think I got it all right. And I mean how can you not love a fox curled up in a little ball. If you're still having trouble with the prompt word, 
There are so many ways to make that prompt fit to what you want to draw, and that's even if you read the word wrong, on purpose or not, or the prompt word makes you think of a different word that looks similar, and maybe that word inspires you more. I've done this several times, like for the prompt dragon. I really didn't feel like drawing a literal dragon, and since that Inktober, I drew animal hybrids that were inspired by two animals that had to do with a prompt. And since a dragon is already a bat lizard hybrid, I decided to use my sea lion hybrid that I like to draw and I had him getting his drag on. My sea lion as a drag queen and I had so much fun drawing this and I would have never thought of it if I wasn't bored with the dragon prompts and was trying so hard to find some way to make it something more interesting to me. Another example is one of the prompts was corral, like corralling your horses into the stable or fencing. But that Inktober I was combining every pair of prompts and the other one that I was pairing with it was sleeping or sleepy or something along those lines. And at first I thought about a lamb sleeping in a corral, but then for some reason I felt like drawing my feral critter, which is a ferret eel hybrid, and, and I thought about how she lives underwater and it sparked a vision of her sleeping on a bed of coral, which I thought was so cute and I had to draw it. I also ended up making an embroidery piece with that exact drawing too because I was so inspired and even though coral, like coral reefs, isn't the same thing as corral like on a farm, it is a prompt and seeing corral prompted me to think coral and it's using your imagination like that that I think is just so cool. And if I wasn't participating in Inktober that year, I would have definitely never came up with that idea on my own. And I'm so happy I did it. I mean, look at this embroidery that I made inspired by that doodle all the way in Inktober. I'll have a little link here too, so if you want to check out the video of the process, I showed the original drawing in that video too. Another way to make the prompts fit what you like to draw. I love drawing my animal hybrid characters, so when it was time for day four of Inktober, 2021 with the prompt not, I immediately went to draw my Octophant creature all tangled up. So if you have your own character or OC that you've created and that you love drawing, let the prompts inspire what your character is doing. In this case, my Octophant is tying himself in knots and just getting all kinds of tangled. And let me tell you, it was a real challenge to try to draw knots with ink because I have like zero planning. I was just using straight pen onto the paper. So figuring out how to draw where the knot would overlap to make it look like a knot, it was just very confusing confusing. I tried to add some shading here and there to make it look a little more intentional, like I knew what was going to be in front of what, but let's be honest, I was just guessing the whole time. I also tried so many times that I didn't even bother to make sure that the octophant only had eight legs, including the trunk, so I'm sure in this drawing he has more, but... I really was trying to figure out how to draw a dang knot. And I wasn't even using a reference either, so I guess I could have used a reference, but oh well. Anyway, that's just an example of how I used something else that I like to draw and made it work. Since I have a lot of animal hybrids that I've created over the years, it was easy to pick this one out of mine since it makes the most sense. I mean, he would get knotted up with all those tentacles. For day five, the prompt was Raven, and I just could not think of another way to stretch this prompt farther than just drawing a raven. I mean the prompt is already an animal and it's not like I could just add another animal to it. I mean I guess I could have just crossed a raven with like a lizard or something as an animal hybrid which could be interesting but I feel like since I don't really draw a lot of ravens I use this as an excuse to study the bird and all of its details and for me drawing is my way of learning too. You're kind of forced to pay extra close attention to detail and it's how I learn a lot about the designs of animals just by drawing them. So this was one of those prompts that I just gave in and just drew it literally. Something you can also do is draw the prompt literally but only zoom in and study a small part of it or zoom all the way out and draw a silhouette of it. There's a lot of ways to draw the same thing by changing the angle of view and the posing of the animal or whatever the subject is as well. It's also just so fun to explore drawing different textures that you don't normally draw and ravens are weirdly hairy with their feathers and their feathers look so soft and I really enjoy 
avoid all the little fine wispy lines and gestures that make up that texture. So in the end, I'm glad I just drew a raven. Days six and seven's prompt were spirit and fan. And I saw the fan prompt and I was just simply not gonna draw a literal fan that blows air. I just hate drawing any kind of mechanical things. If I can avoid it, I will. And I also had no interest in drawing some kind of sports fan or anything like that. But with the prompt spirit combined with the prompt fan, I used this as an excuse to draw Spirit Stallion of the Cimarron fan art with Rain because if you've seen the movie, Rain ends up being a big fan of Spirit. This movie was a giant part of my childhood and I think I watched the movie probably a hundred times. And on the DVD there was an exclusive bonus video of this guy who was the artist I think showing you how to draw Spirit. And I think I watched that one video way more times than I watched the actual movie. I feel like I didn't do it justice but it was very nostalgic because drawing these characters took me back to my toddler days trying to follow along and draw spirit. Also can we talk about how much of a stud spirit is? Like look at that strong jawline and that rock star hair. He's just a handsome cartoon horse. And Rain is so pretty too. I feel like I messed her up a lot because I kept reworking her eye and I couldn't get the hair where I wanted it so I kept going over the wrong ones on accident and it just it was just a mess. And it was just stressing me out because I wanted to do her justice, but working with ballpoint pen made it a little bit more challenging than I thought. Anyway, let me know if you were a spirit obsessed horse girl like me as a kid. And also, can we take a second to appreciate the soundtrack of that movie? That CD was on repeat for years for me as a kid. Anyway, if there is a fandom that you're really absorbed in now, that you love drawing fan art of, think about the characters in that world and use the prompts to determine what they're doing or what they look like or how they're interacting with another character. Or maybe the prompt inspires a whole new character to be added to this world. The only limit is your imagination, so get creative with it. The last prompt for this week is day eight, watch. And instead of drawing a regular watch, because again, I don't like mechanical things, I thought what about a pocket watch because at least those are kind of cooler to me than just regular wrist watches. And then I started thinking about the white rabbit from Alice in Wonderland with his pocket watch. And then I thought what if that pocket watch was shattered on the ground and in the composition you look up and the white rabbit is like devastated or something or what if there was an owl with like two pocket watches as eyes but all of that was really complex and I really didn't have a lot of time to work on it and I didn't want to take on such an ambitious project especially if I'm gonna be doing it in ballpoint pen which I'm not super comfortable as far as sketching out compositions and stuff I kind of just go right for it so I decided to draw just an owl going out of his way to watch you Owls are such creeps. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing what I came up with for the first week of Inktober. I like to think of Inktober and any prompt list for that matter as a way to stretch my imagination, to come up with ideas that I wouldn't have otherwise. I mean, last year I drew a sea otter in sneakers and I know I would have not drawn that without combining the prompts for those two days from Inktober. Forget what they were, but this is the drawing that I'm talking about. I do also have a playlist of my sketchbook tours and my Inktober drawings are in a lot of those too. So if you're interested to see what I came up with from previous year's Inktobers, either go ahead and follow me on Instagram or I'll have some link below too, so you can check those out after this one. I just think it's really important to not take challenges like Inktober so seriously and just have fun with it. And I feel like once I got over the pressure of making good art every day and being overwhelmed with having to post it every day also and it not being good or to my liking, I got to let loose and make stupid, silly, cute art that I wouldn't have otherwise. I mean, today I drew a baby penguin with a bow tie, like come on. Next week I'll be sharing the second week of Inktober drawings and sharing more ways to tackle Inktober and I think I'm gonna use next week's prompts to create a narrative narrative with them, with some reoccurring characters maybe, and I'll be sharing more ideas on how you can treat these prompts to make it easier to complete this challenge. Make sure you follow me on Instagram to see each of my Inktober drawings as I draw them every day. My Instagram is at sketchingwithsarah and all of my socials are linked below too. So come say hi! If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more art and animal related content. I upload a new video here every Friday and I would love to have you become a creative critter with me and follow along on my YouTube channel journey. If you made it this far, please let me know if you're doing Inktober this year and have you found any of this helpful? I'd love to know. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay creative and I'll see you next Friday's video.